Welcome back. You're watching Business Morning on Channels Television. It's time for us to take a look at developments in the commodities market now. And I've got Okwemi Oguntade, who is a senior economic research analyst with Financial Derivatives Company, to take a look at some of those issues with us this morning on the program. Good morning to you, Okwemi. It's great Good to morning. have you. Hi. So um, take us through some of the develop developments that uh, FDC has been tracking. I know, for instance, that uh, the uh, FX market continues to be a very strong point yes. of conversation. And it seems as if uh, the market is uh, converging below 400 naira to a dollar, at least. Yeah, um, at, the close, uh, at the close of business yesterday, we saw that naira appreciated in the parallel market to 395. That's a significant um, improvement compared to 405 um, the previous day. And we've seen that, you know, the CBM policies are filtering into um, an upward movement in the value of the naira. But um, looking at other dynamics in the market, we've also seen that you know they uh, they're increasing supply to SMEs and BDCs, and this would encourage trade and economic activity in that aspect. Other burning issues that we've seen so far this week is the fact that oil prices are, have resumed the downward spiral again, and largely because of events in the U.S. We're seeing oil prices at fifty-three dollars to a barrel. Um, compared to $55 we're talking about um, last time we met on Tuesday. And the reason is because we've seen that, you know, gasoline stock piles in the U.S. increased beyond expectations. Um, despite the fact that we saw crude inventories going down, but gasoline stock piles went up by a, about 1 million barrels. And this is, you know, this led to the decline we're seeing in um, crude oil prices. Um, aside from that, a uh, recent development we've noticed in the market is the price of seaway bottle. Water is now about 550, um, 550 naira, and you know this is um, a 10 percent increase from where it was um, in previous months, which was 500. But comparing it to you know last year, as last year was about 400 naira, and so what we're saying now is a cumulative increase of about 37.5 percent. And um, for looking at you know the year-on-year -year inflation, year-on-year -year inflation is currently at 17.26 uh, 17 percent. And we're seeing seaway bottles going up by so anecdotal evidence is suggesting that um, seaway bottles is up by 37.5 percent, and inflation is suggesting that you know year -year inflation is suggesting that um, uh, prices are going up by 17.72 percent. And one might wonder why the significant difference between the two numbers. So first of all, we need to know that headline inflation um, it's not just it doesn't just focus on one particular commodity; it's a basket of good items taken together so there's a net of effect on different communities. Yeah. We also know that looking at seaway water, the factors that go into the production of that water, for instance power, they need to you know power the, um, the, the, the factories that would process or filter out the dirt in the water. And the machines. You, yeah, the machines. You also have the, um, the chemical components which are imported to ensure that you know the water is clean. So all that taken together is contributing to uh, the increase in prices we're seeing, and most distributors and traders are talking about the increase in operating expenses, and that's why they have to try and um, adopt a cost-reflective price to ensure that they still make um, profit. So it now seems as if the numbers are not really adding up. Yeah. They say data doesn't lie. Now, from the National Bureau of Statistics, you have reports that the economy is improving, at least on a Bayesian effect. Yes. But then you look at it on the average Nigerians, you know, and they're saying that uh, retailers are still pricing most of their goods and services, commodities, food commodities in yes. particular, at really very high prices. You still cannot get uh, a bag of rice, anything, any, you, can't, you can't get it for 8,000 naira anywhere. No. It's still very firmly at 16,000 naira in some parts of the country. But for how long can this last? Especially if most of them didn't really have enough money to stock up anyways. Yeah. So whatever supplies they have in their storerooms should be depleted by now and they should be going back to get fresh supplies, which means they should reflect the new prices if they're, for instance, uh, buying Forex from the Central Bank of Nigeria. Yeah. They should begin to reflect the new prices because Nigerians really are not finding it any easy anymore. Well, when you look at the case of Nigeria, Nigeria is not the typical example of a perfect market. So there's this myth in Nigeria that when the prices of any item goes up, it never comes down, it just stays up. And that's largely because of the imperfect um, component of our market, so to speak. So you mentioned rice. Um, you know, I don't think anybody in Nigeria will probably think rice will go down to 8,000 or 7,000. Even if not 8,000 naira, at least a realistic sum, because we still have minimum wage unchanged at yeah. 18,000 naira. Yeah. So for 
for those who actually get paid 18,000 naira, you take 16,000 naira, you can't take, you can't buy a whole bag of rice. You can't even buy half a bag of rice. No, you can't. Buy, you, uh, unfortunately, you have a very big family to feed. And then you buy a quarter bag and then it doesn't last you. So it really does not make any sense. Yes, it doesn't. I agree with you. But the, the problem, the, what we're seeing in the Nigerian market, it's an imperfect market. And while we want to, uh, we would expect rice, rice to come down because of, you know, we've seen an appreciation in the exchange rate. When you're looking at it year on year, as at you know, 2015, when the exchange rate was about 199, I mean, you know, you want to import um, quality seeds, you want to import fertilizers. If you're bringing those things at 199 and now you're bringing it at, give or take, let's use the official rate of 306. There's a significant difference there. And so we haven't seen the exchange rate go back to where it was two years ago. So I don't think we should expect that, you know, farmers would adjust or rather traders would adjust their prices below cost but then we've there had the federal government we've had the federal government intervening in that aspect the yes. federal government providing quality seeds yes. giving fertilizer and even state governments as well so it's it's almost a case of um people just deliberately wanting to sabotage the efforts well i wouldn't say deliberately trying to sabotage the efforts i would say like i mentioned last time manufacturers are keeping prices at their current levels to recoup losses they made previously before government interventions came into play so uh, it's only normal or it's only rational for any um, average individual to want to ensure that they keep prices at a certain level to cover up the losses they made previously and then make profits. Now, the question of if going forward they are going to decline or they're going to reduce prices um, and filter in that pasture effect of government intervention to consumer is a case of if these policies are sustained, it's a case of if the exchange rate maintains stability around them, because a lot of people are still, you know, um, are still worried that there might be a reversal, so to speak. So there's the precautionary measure which I told you of like, on Tuesday. There's also the factor that you can't, um, you can't come up with absolute certainty that this, what we're seeing in the market, the trends we're seeing in the markets are going to be sustained over the next couple of months. So they're trading carefully. Mm. They're trading carefully to ensure that you know profits are protected. They're also trying carefully not to, you know, um, appear to the consumer that they're just adjusting prices, you know. Um. But for how long would that, would that last? For how long will they continue to hold Nigerians to ransom? Because um, as much as, you know, this, there's this whole conundrum that we find ourselves in. Yes. Everybody has a part to play. Yes. So if you have the federal government on one hand, the state government on the other hand, trying to work towards easing the pressure on Nigerians, why is it that on the other side of the table, yeah. the people who they're trying to work to protect do not in any ways contribute to protect even the next person? So you have on a regular, you know, you're buying um Paint bucket, I don't think it sells for 100 naira now, Gary. <laughs> I doubt it. But then if once upon a time it was being sold for 100 naira, because yes. of the issues, yes, you need to make get your capital back. You need to cover up your losses like you rightly pointed out. But why not have it at a very reasonable price, for instance? So that even if you want to complain, you complain just a little bit. Well, it's one of the, I would say, vices of a capital market. They have the bargaining power here of you know, capitalism. It's not, you know, it's not... Um, a situation where the government can regulate prices and say, you know what, you have to charge prices, as I said, which is what they've done with, um, which is what they've done with petrol. But then, you know, they put a cap on it that you have to charge at one for five. But if you look at diesel, diesel is a deregulated market, and mm -hmm. you can see diesel is at two hundred. So at the end of the day, you have to look at the market. Um, capitalists are not, um, or they, they do not have this altruistic behavior towards the society to want to play a fair game. They are out to make profits. Profit maximization is, you know, the goal, yeah? So it's not, you know, it's not a, a non-for-profit non organization. So it's only fair or it's only normal that you'd expect them to hold out prices at a high level to ensure that they maximize profits. But we need mechanisms. The welfare of consumers. We need mechanisms to also protect the that's economy the from such that's capitalists. Where comes, that's where consumer, um, consumer regulators come in to ensure that, you know, um, there are no oligo oligopolistic tendencies in the market where a few buyers try to determine the prices that should be sold to consumers. So they have the bargaining power and, you know, at the end of the day, there needs to be some form of regulation which is currently not present in our Nigerian market. And then, sadly, it seems as if we're still largely uh, looking at what global prices are with regards to some of those major agri-commodities like wheat, corn and, and cocoa, but, but sugar traded flat at least, so that's yeah. uh, a little bit of a, a bright spot. 
Yeah, um, we're saying that, you know, like you mentioned, with corn, uh, cocoa prices are trending downwards. And we're also seeing that sugar has remained relatively flat because the supply and demand dynamics there is what's driving prices to remain. While we're seeing, you know, increase in supply on one hand, we're also seeing an increase in demand, which is essentially making the price flat in that angle. Hmm. Well, Okwemi, thank you so much for coming on the program thank today and sharing your me. thoughts with us. Okwemi Guntale is a senior economic research analyst with Financial Derivatives Company.